Hi, I'm Mo. And I'm Dr. Amy. I'm Sin. And today we're having the, the sex, sex talk. <laughs> One, two, three. The, the sex, sex talk. The sex talk. The sex talk. And what are we talking about today, Sin and Amy? Pubes. We're, <laughs> we're talking about pubes, pubic hair. Pubic, pubic hair. hair. I wanted to do a talk about pubic hair because I think it's a very important thing that we actually don't discuss very often, is how do you like your pubic hairs manicured? Are you a full-on rugged terrain type of person, or do you like a very nicely manicured yard? So we're going to talk about kind of preferences where people get these types of ideas or attractions, whether it be early on or through images that they see, uh, early exposure to Playboys or, you know, as they're growing up. Um, also, what it does for you to do grooming. So you have your preferences of what you're attracted to and also just the self-care routine of how you have a relationship with your body and your body hair. Mm -hmm. So I think something that's really common that we see if we watch a lot of porn is very manicured, very cleaned up, almost non-existent hair. And that was pretty common, I think, maybe in the 90s on. It was a lot of like yeah. all shaved or mostly shaved. Mm -hmm. um, but that was also at a time where the porn that was out was very glamorous and higher budget. And just there was a certain aesthetic that just became popularized. But we have to remember that just like a lot of other things in our culture, what becomes popular and attractive is just a shift and change over time. So mm -hmm. even 10 or 15 years prior to that, the way women looked in porn or in adult material looked a lot different than it did in the 90s and looks a lot different than now, which is, I feel, like much more diverse. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I want to say I, I started to see the um, the the change and, and the going into the all completely shaved look in like the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and I grew up in the 70s, I was a kid in the 70s, and uh, for me, you know, the first images that I saw were women with hair. And, um, you know, some had like a full, complete bush, mm -hmm. others it was, I mean, there was hair there, but it was still kind of groomed and trimmed on the sides type of thing. Um, but I remember the very first time that I saw um, a woman's hair, I was like, I must have been like five or six years old, and I was on the beach um, in Mexico with uh, my parents and I happened to be walking, and there was a woman coming towards me in a bikini, and she had some hair like kind of like popping off the out. top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, um, and I just, I, I didn't know it what it was or what I was seeing, but I just kind of, I still clearly remember that, and I was like, well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And it kind of, like, I felt something, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then the next time, or like a year later, I was at some, I ended up uh, at some bar, believe it or not, with my parents in Mexico. Long story short, my dad used to be in a band in Mexico, and um, he took us to this place he used to play at. The opening act was a burlesque dancer. And um, she came out in a full, like, you know, the whole feathered... Full burlesque yeah, yeah. regalia. Uh -huh. Well, she ended up in a completely nude, like um, like a bodysuit kind mm -hmm. of thing, but just completely nude. Mm -hmm. And she had full... Full muff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those were the first two, like, actual women that I saw, mm -hmm. you know. And I was six, seven years old, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you get, you're hanging with your cousins and you fall, you know, you, you uh, end up... Uh, getting into your uncle's playboys mm -hmm. and stuff like right, that, right. and I, that's all I would see is, is women with hair. So this, for me, so this, yeah. that was a big thing, and I think that's, I always just, you know, attributed that as, okay, well that's what the woman is supposed to look like, and that's what turned me on, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah. I like to call it au naturel, and actually I think that like there's something freeing about that. I think that there's a lot of pressure nowadays for women to have it be completely mm -hmm. groomed. Um, and have, you know, completely shave it yeah, off. Maybe or, not even saying groomed, maybe saying like, like shave it off. Because yeah. I think we associate groomed or cleanliness yeah. or yeah. with not having body hair, but that's just the way our bodies are and for a reason. Right. And we do have right. a natural attraction when we take away that cultural influence to what is biologically really natural, which right. is 
body hair. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that it's whatever choice you have and in your relationship, whatever feels fun and enjoyable in the way that you engage with your partner or partners. Right. Um, and also the relationship you have with your body when you're grooming. Like Sin said, I think it's really interesting that you mentioned this because um, a lot of our attractions sometimes start with that first or earlier exposure to like what a body looks like or what sexuality is and it really imprints or sticks with us mm -hmm. that memory of like that first porn that we saw or the first playboy we found in a trash can right whatever kind of what whatever yeah. sort of stimulus was there when we were first sort of having these feelings that were happening in our body right? especially when you're coming of age and you're mm -hmm. as, as an adolescent um, that really sticks with you. So it's not surprising that what you might be attracted to now is related to those things that were curious and interesting and mysterious at that at that yeah. coming of age time. So I'm curious, Sin, how do you let your partners know that? Uh, I mean, is this a preference of yours? And yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, and let me start out by saying everyone should do what they are comfortable with. Right. Okay. That's first and foremost. Um, because uh, sometimes when I talk to people about this topic, you know, I get the, well, you, sh you know, you should tell your partner who you're with, you know, what to do or how to look. And I'm like, no, that's not, that's not what it is. I've never done that. And I don't think anyone should do that. Everyone should do what they're comfortable with. Um, my, it's what I like. It's my mm -hmm. preference. I do the same thing. Um, you know, with people that I've, that I've been with, I always ask what they like. Mm -hmm. When I'm in a relationship, you know, I always want to do what the other person likes and things right. as well because right. that is just something that I feel like I want to do for them. Right. So yeah, it is it's always been my preference, you know, for women to have hair. And I've always told them, like, mm -hmm. just right off the bat, I'm like, I really dig hair, you know, it's just something <laughs> like, that, don't that worry yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, don't, don't yeah, worry like, about don't, it. yeah, <laughs> don't if you not, if you don't want to shave, it's totally cool. Mm -hmm. But I also will say, like, I do I like hair down there, but I do like it to be um, obviously groomed, cleanliness, mm -hmm. import, very important, mm -hmm. um, but I do, I don't like it to be completely mm -hmm. wild, wild, like wild. growing on the Right, so you can have and, like, you know I mean? right, so you mm -hmm. can still, even if you have body hair, you can groom it, brush it, tame mm -hmm. it down, whatever yeah. the way you would like to have it, lather it up, right, yes. have it appear. Absolutely. Uh, I know they make yeah. products for that, and you know, people can do everything with, with body hair now, but body hair is a normal and natural part of just being human, so it's okay that it's attractive to some people, and just like you said, of course, telling your partner how to appear if that's not a dynamic in your relationship that's consensual would not be okay, but suggesting what you're attracted to and letting sure. your partner decide if they want to show up one day and, and do something for you as a partner or for the right. dynamic that right. yeah. would be right. fun and exciting for you, that's that's a different thing, and I think that can be really cool in any relationship. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, I think I it's mean, good to speak up for the things that we like. I, right? I think so too. I mean, I, I you know, it doesn't mean that you, you know your partner or you're going to do everything that they're right. you know bringing up, but at least that's how I look at, mm -hmm. at things in the relationships. Is, mm -hmm. you, is you know I always want to. I I honestly feel like I want to do what the other person right you mm -hmm. know likes. Mm -hmm. um, like it makes me feel good to do something you know for them. Mm -hmm. um, but I get I get so much backlash for this stuff. You from, do for the from from about you know, what, yeah like from you from know, who. Women, uh, guys, just you know, because I've been or no, 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 like uh, just yeah, just people in general. That mm -hmm. uh, whenever this topic has been brought up, you know, it's in not my, in fashion because it's not in I, style I think, to have. I guess um, you know, people just seem to have such a issue. Like, it really, like, yeah, to it it. really like rubs them the wrong well, way. I think that we are like we were talking about you know grooming mm -hmm. and you know I was actually in my head was thinking like it's really sort of like the style du jour is to like completely be bald for a lot of people like just yeah. get rid of the hair completely almost like a child yeah and we really sort of right now we really sort of value that in our mm -hmm. culture but I you know it's we, what's portrayed and also right. it's you know a lot of things go back to marketing we have all these companies like laser companies and waxing companies mm -hmm. and home waxing companies and things that uh, are profit driven so of course those things are going to be marketed and now with social media and influencers. I know there's one laser company that's really popular in Los Angeles that 
they get a bunch of these like really beautiful influencer girls that have a lot of followers yeah. and they give them free laser so then the girls post about it which makes it more visible right mm -hmm. so it's right. just it's all right. really pushed right. by companies that want to make money whereas like there's not a lot yeah, of companies making you're... money off of oh well, natural well. right if you're going oh yeah. natural you don't need all of those fancy mm -hmm. right fancy things but it's all preference you know i know some people might want to laser or wax because it's just maybe more simple it's easier less, it maintenance. Could, less maintenance there's a lot of bacteria that can actually mm -hmm. grow if you're mm -hmm. not if you're not you know bathing on a regular basis mm -hmm. so i think a, bathing is very important yeah, yeah. bathing is very important <laughs> if you have. start off by saying that yeah. as well bathing is especially very especially if you live in a warm climate like sure. los angeles mm -hmm. where a lot of hair can be you know sweaty yeah. yucky mm -hmm. yeah i get i mean and that's I, I get a lot of that stuff from from people when i've had this type of discussion with them is you know oh you know how do you like why it, it gets this or that or it's so mm -hmm. dirty blah blah and i'm like who are you with that like are they not like you can showering have, I have hair in my like, head but like, it doesn't mean that yeah. it's today was wash day but i actually right. don't wash my hair very much yeah but right you know having hair doesn't mean that you wash or do not wash your hair in fact right. most people hopefully are washing yeah daily uh, whether they have hair or not. Exactly. So the, having hair is definitely no indication of cleanliness or dirtiness, right. yeah. not being hygienic. Yeah. Right. Um, it's just a preference on body yeah. hair. And yeah. we are very also very critical of women's body hair, but you don't hear people talking about how men are... We yeah. don't. And, and, I, and I would love to address that since mm -hmm. we're here, and since we have a man here, Mm -hmm. You know, men definitely do groom their uh, body Absolutely. Too. We don't yeah. hear people talking about it as much, or also it's not, I don't know, exploited or objectified as much um, in the same way as women. So um, I know most women, when I've talked to them one on one, they've mentioned, I prefer this or I prefer that, mm -hmm. but I don't hear them discussing it in their actual relationship very much. So I think that's something to talk about too, especially when it's a functionality mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. like. Um, hair stubble causing uh, like an abrasive feeling which mm -hmm. would give brush burn or mm -hmm. be uncomfortable or you know odors and things like that that can mm -hmm. accumulate you know when you're down having oral sex and things mm -hmm. of that nature you, mm -hmm. you you know it depends on your preference too you know one of the things that we do want to talk about in another episode is funk some people prefer a little like body funk and mm -hmm. some people really like a soapy and there's a difference mm -hmm. between that kind of like light body funk and mm -hmm. bacteria and infection right. and yes. right. you know so that's that's also preference so you know really everything even with pubic hair it's, it's personal preference we need to understand that yes, a lot of natural. these things that are popularized change over time and what feels like it's the right thing now or the popular thing probably will change and go out of style yeah. and things go in and out of style so trying not to keep up with the styles because they change Right. Mm -hmm. So bottom line, do what works for you. Mm -hmm. Do what feels great for you, right? And maybe have a conversation about it with your partner or mm -hmm. partners if you feel like you have a preference that mm -hmm. you would like them to know about mm -hmm. or if you want to know what they're into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, I mean, it's very important, I think, that, uh, and, you know, it's, it's a cliche thing to say that, you know, communication is very important, but it really is, and, and you'd be surprised, I think, um, if you actually really are open with the person you're with, your mm -hmm. partner, and you tell them what you like, um, you might be surprised, you know, because mm -hmm. you might be going into it thinking, okay, well, this is what I'm seeing out there, and this is what my past experiences have been, yeah. so um, I'm going to take this into this, and no, that's not the case. It's different with every person, and, um, you know, again, I can't stress enough, you know, everyone do what you're comfortable with, um, and, you know, when you're with someone, tell them what you like. Yeah. And also be cautious not to shame other people. I know yeah. you yeah, just mentioned important. whether it's yeah. a partner or just other people you've had conversations with. When you mention, hey, I just like I like women's body hair. For people to be negative or critical, yeah. and that's just an opinion about what a personal preference is with something that's actually the natural yeah. choice. Yeah. So let's be cautious of how we react and respond to other people's preferences. You know, as we were talking, I was thinking, you know, I don't know if I have that much of a preference personally, but I, something did come to mind where. Um, a lot of times when I've dated men and we get to the point where we might be intimate, I've noticed that a lot of men often will shave their chest to impress me. That look at this smooth chest, I've shaved my chest for you, look how groomed I am. Mm. When in actuality, like, I don't prefer that at all. And mm. Especially when stubble co starts coming into a man's chest, laying on a chest that's prickly is just not very mm -hmm. comfortable, mm -hmm. especially after you're intimate with somebody. So I would actually never prefer that. But most relationships I've been in over a span of time, um, before having a discussion about it, usually the assumption is is that I would like a smooth chest and they've shaved it for mm -hmm. me and I should be very excited that they did this. Right. And so. I think I think that, you know, there I think there are studies or some you know, evidence that 
more testosterone creates more mm -hmm. chest hair. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a masculine thing to embrace if that's mm -hmm. something that you're into. I prefer yeah. guys with chest hair. <laughs> <laughs> you like the bears. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> that's, that's me. Nice. nice. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> So many potential jokes and directions we can go, yeah. but I'm, I'm really glad that we discussed this because I like when, I, I like I, I do like I do like chest hair. Yeah, I don't. You do. Yeah, I don't think there's I don't I, I'm not a fan of I have I grow no hair a lot. <laughs> I have no hair. Not growing. Not but you're not growing. It, no, no, no. no but I mean, like I have like it, no, right? like I have like I have no chest hair. I have like no. Yeah. This is yeah. okay. My facial hair. This joke of whatever you call this thing is like a year into it. <laughs> like it's, it takes I do not, yeah, it. yeah, I do not. I and also, not everybody hair grows right. hair in different ways too. Yeah. So yeah. that's important to remember not to like shame or critique somebody's just natural body. Right. I was more referring to when the stubble comes in. You know, if, yeah. if you're intimate yeah, yeah. and you want to lay on somebody's chest after you were close, yeah. Yeah. and then it feels like sandpaper. I was referring to, I was referring to the stubble too, not. The fact that you don't actually grow, <laughs> right? No, I understand. <laughs> That's different I understand. than hey, babe, look what I did for you. I, 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 I like the oh, I, what I'm saying is I like the oh natural, mm -hmm. whatever's natural for you. Yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and and say I, you know, I kind of feel that way around pubic hair as well for men and for women. Like whatever's natural for that person mm -hmm. and whatever that person likes, I think I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, person likes on themselves, yeah. especially yes. when somebody holds it with confidence. Yeah, um, now yeah. with the kind of revival of more natural looking women in adult content, and especially with exotic dancers, I've seen women that are just so proud to show that they have pubic hair and they'll mm. have it sticking out on purpose a little bit to just say, look what I'm it's owning. It's kind of retro now, right? Yeah, but it's just <laughs> really God. cool it's to see back. It's coming back. people like owning their bodies. Everything comes back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's true though, it's true. Back. I mean, uh, that that's a big... A big turn on is how one carries. Right, when you own you know? what you want yeah, and yeah, what you yeah. like, even if it's something that may not be in style or less right, conventional, right, right. but if you own it and you love it and you're so proud of it, that becomes sexy and inspiring to other people. Yeah, yeah it's been me for 30 years. <laughs> well, I'm to like, you know, whenever I talk just to, embrace you. Yeah, yeah. About the subject of people when I would just get, but you're right though, like people would, would almost, you know, talk down mm -hmm. uh, to me about stuff like that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Really, like, what is the? You just wait till it comes back. Yeah, yeah. Like, you just wait, wait till, yeah. Because you know. every what goes around comes around. Mm -hmm. most yeah. of the time. Mm -hmm. no. And that's what you see a lot now with, especially there's so many independent sex workers and people making um, a product and, and content on their own. You see a lot more natural women, women with diverse body types mm -hmm. and diverse appearances. Uh, with Instagram and something like oh, OnlyFans, all these like kind of pay sites that are popping up. And that's up. good. Like that doesn't there's, have to dictate how you live your life, but you know, there's more visibility with start, different body yeah. types and different um, like pubic hair uh, pre preferences um, because more people are being visible. Like a wider population is more visible than it was maybe 20 years ago. So whereas we saw just this like very similar homogenized body type in the 90s with uh, adult content, now we're just seeing a lot more, which is pretty cool that we right. see a lot more, right. more diversity. So to wrap up, be you, do you, au natural or au something whatever else. it is, do it for you, share it with your partner, communicate, yep. um, and understand that whatever you want to do is totally fine. Yep. And I think that was the sex talk. The sex talk. Ding, ding, ding. Sex Talk.